transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. <laughs> And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the romantic operetta, The Cat and the Fiddle, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest star, Miss Francis Yen. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroad. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's story, the distinguished soprano Frances Yen plays the part of Shirley Sheridan, a young American songwriter. I play the role of Victor Florescue, also a composer. She was sitting on a park bench, alone. I was walking along the path, also alone. And it seemed only polite to stop and pass the time of evening. Well, good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening, monsieur. Beautiful night, isn't it? Yes, beautiful. You know, it's really none of my affair. But in the interest of chivalry, I must inform you that it's quite dangerous for a young lady to be sitting alone in a park in Brussels on a night like this. So I see. Yes, you're, you're quite right. I, I am a total stranger, and I have no right to speak to you. But you're not a total stranger. I'm not? No, I've seen you often at the conservatory. I studied there a while. Did you really? You're Victor for the rest of you, aren't you? I've heard your symphony, and I like it. Well, thank you. What's your name? Shirley Sheridan. I'm from Vancouver, Washington. Well, our music gives us something in common. Why don't we go someplace for a bite of supper and talk about uh, the conservatory? Oh, I hardly think I could do that. May I call on you tomorrow? I don't know. She didn't say yes, she didn't say no. She didn't say stay, she didn't say go. She only knew that in spite of her. And then she knew he sat beside her there. At first there was hers, not one little word. And coyly she took one sly little look. And something rose up and smiled inside. Her heart had started beating wild inside. So what did she do? I leave it to you. She did just what you do. She didn't say yes. She didn't say no. She didn't say stay. She didn't say go. She only knew that he spied her there. And then she knew he sat beside her there. Look at those stars. Look at that moon. Anything that happens on a night like this is important. Two strangers meeting in a park can be the beginning of a, of a love story. You see, the night was made for love. The night was made for love. The day has eyes for sweet, delicate charm, but nighttime sighs for soft, hungry arms so lovingly hold you while two lips on fire have ardently told you of sweet desire.
I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Will you tell me where you live? No. I don't think I should do that either. Well, at least tell me where I can write to you to try to arrange a meeting. Uh, you can write me in care of general delivery. If you do, I'll answer you, and after a while, if you still want to call on me, then I'll send you my address. I'll keep on writing until you let me see you. All right. But if for any reason at all you lose interest, just stop writing. If there's no letter from you, I'll understand. Good night, Mr. Zareski. Good night, Miss Sheridan. You'll be hearing from me. Care of general delivery. My dear Miss Sheridan, our meeting in the park was a moment I shall never forget. Won't you please let me see you again before? Dear Mr. Zareski, you really did right. And I'm so glad. It isn't often that a chance acquaintance turns out to be... Dear Shirley, all day I think of you. I try to lose myself in my music, but I find that the memory of that night... Dear Victor, isn't this general delivery romance fun? If you keep on writing, I'll soon know that you meant what you said that night in the park and... Uh... Shirley, darling, when may I see you to tell you to your lovely face how my heart wants you, my lips want you, my very soul needs the love that only you need. Victor, my love, I must go to Paris for a few weeks. Please, please keep writing. And when I return, I'll return to you. My address there will be the Hotel Continental. You're sure there's no letter for me? Oh, uh, nothing, monsieur, nothing. And besides, you are not the fellow who has been coming in for Victor Florescu's letter. No, I've always sent someone. But now it's so important. Well, anyway, I am Victor Florescu. Oh, I am sure you are, monsieur. But there is nothing here for you. Is there any mail for a Miss Shirley Sheridan? Oh, Sheridan, Sheridan. Oh, yes, there is a whole stack of letters here for her. Pretty little girl. Used to come in every day. Then all at once, she stopped. A whole stack of my letters to her. And she doesn't even bother to pick them up. And what did she do? I leave it to you. She did just what you do. Oh, magnificent, Miss Sheridan. Oh, so bright and so gay. And so charming. And so are you. Thank you, Monsieur Duday. Now, this review I am producing, my dear, has a score by a very talented young composer. But his music is a bit heavy. I'd like to persuade him to use some of your songs. And so I took the liberty of inviting him here. Oh, he probably won't want anyone else's music in his show. Uh, I think he'll be agreeable. You see, he seems to be, uh, well, let us say, romantically involved with the star of the show. <laughs> Mademoiselle Odette is a violinist. And the things he's written do not seem to fit her talent. But I don't quite see. Oh, he wants above all to keep her happy. And your songs would be just right for her. I'll be happy to have him hear them. But I haven't been able to write much of anything since I came back from Paris. Well, what's the trouble, my dear? He stopped writing. I, I, I mean, ever since I've moved into this apartment, this some long-haired musician across the court keeps hammering on his piano and drives me crazy. Oh, 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 oh I wonder. The gentleman I was speaking of... Lives in the same building. Well, if he's the one and the gloomy stuff he plays is his idea of music, I'll get it. Surely. Victor. I mean, Mr. Florescu. Uh, you two uh, know each other? We met once, briefly. You'd hardly say we know each other. But surely. Well, you must become better acquainted. Uh, Victor, just listen to, this, to the things this girl has written. They'll be wonderful for Odette. Sing something for us, will you, my dear? Uh, what's this new one on the piano? Well, that's my latest. It's a rather serious song. It's 
describe the fickleness of man and the hopeless fidelity of woman. Oh, that sounds charming. <laughs> Please, sing it for us. Why to forget, won't you? Lovely song, Shirley. I, I mean, Miss Sheridan. It's rather sentimental for me, I'm afraid, Mr. Florescu. But maybe you and the star of your show can give it more a romantic interpretation. That cat tender fiddle. Oh, Shirley. Try to forget, won't you? All you have meant to me. And all I Shirley against me. I began to wonder about Doday. He kept calling her my dear. Of course, he was the reason she had stopped writing to me. I made up my mind never to think of her again. I could think of nothing else. I tried to lose myself in my work and wrote a song called The Love Parade. It turned out to be quite a cynical song. I told myself that this was my new philosophy of life. I would rather watch the other fellow strolling down lover's lane. Watch him getting soft and mellow with love life on the brain. But how nice was I with a sweet bonbon just to dawdle and wisely smile while we in her eyes. I see him squeeze her arm, hoping she'll agree. 
buzzing round each rare fair charm like a busy bee. Ah, but when the march is ended and they part, when fears and tears are blended in each heart, I'm very glad I stayed sitting high and dry, looking on the love parade. Blushing bright. But when the march is ended and we fall, when tears and tears are blended in his heart, I'm very glad I stayed sitting high and dry, looking on the love parade. Monsieur Daudet, come in. Well, how's the score coming, Victor? Well, I'm working on it. Ah, and what do you think of Miss Sheridan's music? Miss Sheridan seems to be a very talented girl. I think she is. As a matter of fact, she's a very charming girl, yes. I'll tell you a secret, Victor. I've asked her to marry me. Well, congratulations. I hope you'll both be very happy. Hey, what's this song on the piano? Oh, it's just something I've been working on. Oh, poor Pierrot. That sounds a little bitter. I'm afraid I, I've been in a bitter mood recently. Anyway, here's how it goes. Poor Pierrot, love this fair Pierrot. Golden love of a happy heavenly man. To the sweet retreat. Sweet birds on the wing hasten to bring garlands of spring. At her dainty feet, wove on their loom carpets of bloom, breathing perfume. What heaven they knew, only lovers may know. envelope here. Oh. oh, my gracious picture. What's the matter? This letter in my pocket. It's addressed to you. I must have picked it up at general delivery for you months ago and forgotten about it. Let me see that. Must go to Paris. Please, please keep writing when I return. Goodbye, Doday. Uh, Victor, uh, where are you going? Across the court. I hope I'm not too late. <laughs> Surely there's something I must tell you. And there's something I must tell you, too, Mr. Velasco. 
I'm not going to let them put any of my songs in your score. It's beautiful just the way it is. Except that it has such an unhappy ending. An unhappy ending? Oh, oh yes, I'd forgotten. You're going to marry Doday. What? Well, aren't you? Well, he asked me, but do you think I'm going to throw myself away on that old fuss budget just because you're going to marry a, a, a female fiddle player? Who? Odette, the star of your show. Odette? Oh, I surely... She doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, dear. It's all been such a silly mix-up. We knew each other for such a short time, and yet as far as I was concerned, after that one moment alone with you, the, the whole world changed. One moment alone, that's all we have known. And yet it seemed paradise Had opened its golden portal There in your lovely eyes One moment alone Was then I was shown A glimpse of an angel fair Too much Howard McNair, Marvin Miller, and our entire company for their fine performances in The Cat and the Fiddle. With music by Jerome Kern and book and lyrics by Otto Hava. And adapted for The Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. And now, here again is Miss Frances Yen. <laughs> I'm glad you finally made up your mind with that yes to no business. We certainly enjoyed having you with us tonight. Thank you so much, Gordon. And if you ever ask me to come back on the show train, the answer is a definite yes. Now, what are you going to do next week? We have the fine Kalman operetta, Shari, with its wonderful Viennese music and another wonderful guest, Miss Vivian Delicieta. Well, then, next to Monday's Railroad Hour is a must-listen for me. Well, thank you, Francis, and come back again real soon. All aboard. Well, dear folks, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Cat and the Fiddle was presented by special arrangement with Sam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in the Warner Brothers production, The West Point Story. 
Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Do you hope to own a home of your own someday? There's no better way to finance your future than through regular saving with United States Savings Bonds. Safeguard your future, America's future. Start to save now with United States Savings Bonds. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Transcribe.